My name is Indu Alagar Swami and I'm with uh, Team Particular. And today I'm going to talk about all the, the cool extensibilities in terms of our API that we've added with version 5.0. So um, before I joined Team Particular, I was a user of N Service Bus, and I started working with N Service Bus with version 2.x, 2.5, something like that. And one thing that I was absolutely <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> okay, I'm good. <laughs> so, um, one thing uh, that I was always excited about in Service Bus was the extensibility about the, the API things that you could just replace and uh, serialization. Uh, I don't want to use XML serialization, no worries. You know, this is how you plug in your own serialization and off you go. And that that core concept uh, of like, you know, how extensible the API has been uh, is something that has uh, had attracted me and that's something uh, with an N service bus that's a that's a uh, thing that we strive for within our uh, engineering team. So um, if we look at the past and back in the day when Nudi used to code, uh, we had uh, <laughs> message modules. Uh, so message modules was uh, like fantastic at the time. It gave you like if you wanted to um, do some special processing when messages arrive, where you could hook into the receiving pipeline, where you could do your own thing. So it gave you that extensibility. However. That was just on the receiving end. And if you want to do something very specific uh, on the outgoing side, well, you didn't have much options. But then in version 3.0, uh, we had the message mutators. So with message mutators, that, that pipe was extended even further. So you could do things on the incoming side or the outgoing side. And you could do it a couple of different ways. If, if you are interested at the message at the transport level, then you know you, you had an interface that gave you that control. Or if you're interested at a logical message level, you, know, you had that as well. And you could do things both at the incoming and outgoing side. And 4.0, we still had those extensibilities. And then we also added the unit of work, which was uh, which was more a simplification of the message module, but it g it gave you things where you could yeah you could do the same sort of handling that you wanted to have in your handlers. It gave you that nice pattern that you could implement. So, uh, what's up? What's up? And what's new in version 5.0? So, in addition to all these things, message mutators and uh, unit of work and, and so on, we wanted to take this extensibility to the next level. So what we did was first at the receiving level, so we, we kind of like, so when there's two things that happen, right? So when a message lands up in the queue, the framework, the API picks it up, and then there's a whole bunch of things that happen before we go and invoke your iHandle messages handlers that you have in place. Same thing, when you do a bus.send, before that message gets dispatched to wherever the destination queue is, there's a whole bunch of things that need to happen. So if you had mutators and, and stuff, so they get invoked. So the first thing that we did was we broke this pipeline into two distinct pipes. One for incoming, where things get processed and uh, gets done, and then one for the outgoing. So that was our first distinct uh, thing that we did with five. And so now we have these little things that happen. You know, when a message comes in, you have the mutators, you have to understand the message, so you have to deserialize it. There's other X number of processes that occur. So how could we extend this further in a way that gives you, the user, more control? So what if you wanted to do something specific, maybe say right before you know, mutators get invoked, or you had some behavior that needed to happen after the unit of work is called? So if you needed that kind of flexibility, like just having, you know, how, how could we take that to the next level? So um, what we did was, we uh, we we broke these things into little pieces, and I totally 
you can understand what Kevin Flynn felt like. So we broke this into like little little Lego blocks. So if we break <laughs> if if we break uh, if we have broken these little steps into little tiny Lego blocks, then we could rearrange them in any way we want. So if you had um, a specific step or your own customization that you needed to do, and it needed to happen between, let's say, before the mutators get invoked, or maybe after a different step, now you have this little piece that you can tell the framework it needs to go in at a certain step. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the cool thing with, with you know, thinking about these little tiny things as uh, blocks or pieces is it gives you so much flexibility that you can not only add, add your own little behavior to the part of the incoming messages or outgoing um, messages, but you could also take a particular like built-in stuff, like for example, say auditing, right? So the f when you turn auditing on, the framework takes that message that was successfully processed and it sends it to the audit queue. What if you wanted to tweak the behavior of how you audit messages? What if you didn't want certain things to get audited? W what if you wanted to have a little bit of your own customization in that? So how can you do that? And, and it's, so with this sort of extensibility, those type of things now become feasible where you can take what the framework gave you and then you could, on top of that, say, hey, don't do this, but instead you know, do what I'm asking you to do. So um, how did we do this? This is, uh, the, the whole pipeline concept is built based on the Russian doll pattern. So it's uh, recursive nesting. So you can think of it as like, not just Lego blocks, but there's this like top level Lego block that that's like in control. And then I inside it is nested what it needs to call. So is the C-sharp implementation of this very simple of a behavior. The behavior just takes a, a context and then what it should call next. So from the outermost step, each behavior just calls next, 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 and so on. You go into the, to the innermost layer and you can get out. But uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the context. So the, the context gives you uh, data. So the really cool thing is like, you know, when you're on the receiving uh, pipeline, you have incoming context, and on the when you're doing a bus stop send, and when you're uh, on the outgoing pipeline, you have the um, outgoing context. So the context is a really cool. It's it's nothing but a dictionary. You can stick your own piece of data in there. So if, for example, from the outermost step, you wanted to pass some little data to a inner step, you could totally do that. And and not only that, vice versa too. So if a totally nested step wants to give out a piece of data so that like way up above you, you can know that this data has changed and then based on that if you wanted to do some actions you can you can do that. So um, so essentially you have the again like the topmost step and it's responsible for calling the, the inner step and the inner step. So each each nested step keeps calling this and, and then finally it returns. So how does this really help, this whole nesting and, and you know? The first thing is, it kind of gives you uh, a very intuitive way of coding. I mean, now you could do uh, using statements. Previously, in, with the message module and stuff, you had, like, if you hooked into that, you had a begin and end method. You can't do any using sort of stuff when you have, like, two distinct methods one for begin and one for end. So this is a very uh, a nice way where you can put in your own step, uh, nested at any level that you want, and then you can have the using block where the whole thing gets done as a transaction. So, so you know, the, the, the next, so if all of the inner steps are completely done, then this, this behavior would complete, and if not, you know, you have the control. So the other thing is that there is, uh, it gives you, now you, you're in control. You're, you as the user are in control for your behavior. Not only say that like you register your behavior, but you can tell it like, hey, this particular thing needs to happen right after I invoke my mutator or like whatever the step of the pipeline that you're interested in. So 
So you, you totally uh, control the order. So let's take a, a quick look and how we can code up some behaviors. So if you wanted to add your own or uh, if you wanted to replace the steps, so I'm going to be showing you some code. So I have I, I, um, everybody at the back read OK? Nope. Is that better? OK. So um, what I have here is a very um, simple, straightforward sample. Um, I have, I, I have a, uh, a bootstrapper that would send bus local some, some, some messages. And there is a straightforward handler. And um, it, you know, uh, it, I'm sorry, it, it, it gets that message just to, just to say that it takes some time. I have a thread sleep, random sleep between anywhere between one and five seconds. And once it handles it, it publishes an event. So straightforward. But let's say we wanted to, let's say we want to add a behavior that says, like, hey, if this message processing takes like, X amount of time, I want to have a warning. So, how how would we you know how would we add that? So, from a from a message processing level, you've got the message incoming pipeline. So, the message comes into the queue, and it gets processed. But somewhere in the pipe, we want to say, hey, I actually want to watch. I'm interested in how long this is going to take. So, um, the first thing we do is we add um, we add a class. We want to have a behavior. So let's add a class. OK. And uh, let's call it trigger warning behavior. OK. So the first thing we want to do is um, we want to implement I behavior which is the um, I interface that we want to implement. And in there, we want to specify what's the context. I mean, is this, is this a behavior that you want to modify on the incoming side or outgoing side? So you specify what context. So since this is going to be the uh, incoming context, you specify the incoming context. There. Um, so, OK, let's go ahead and implement this method. So in here, it's going to be straightforward code. And remember, you are responsible when you're adding new steps in the pipeline or when you're adding new things, part of the nesting, it is your responsibility to make sure you call the next. So all the subsequent nested steps get executed. So we're supposed to call next here. We call next. But our goal here is to find out you know, how long did this take. And if, if it took x amount of time, we want to warn. So let's add that. So we have big giant warning um, saying like, hey, if this message took X amount of time, you know, we want to warn. So OK, we have a behavior. Now, what's the next thing we do? So we need to have, we need to tell uh, that this, is, this behavior parts, uh, needs to be part of a step, and this needs to happen at a certain time. So we do that part now. Hey, 
that's cool. <laughs> now I don't have to do one-handed coding. <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so let's register this uh, warning step. So this is the warning step, whatever uh, warning step, and this implements the register step. So um, in here, okay. so, um, so what we're doing is like, okay, we have a behavior and now we need to have this little Lego block which, has, which imbibes that behavior. So you do that by register step. So you, in here, you, you pass what the, uh, the, the step is going to be called, uh, warning step, whatever. And then you pass it the type of the behavior the step is going to have. So type of this uh, trigger warning behavior. And then give it whatever description. Uh, warn. Warn me. So next you need to tell it, OK, I have the step. Where does it need to go or what order? So you say insert uh, before there is a well-known step for invoking handlers. Remember, so the whole idea is like we've broken what we internally do into these little blocks. So you can use that and say, uh, I want this right before invoke handlers. So we've done that. Next, we need to tell the pipeline, hey, pipeline, be aware there's this brand new step that you need to know. So that's standard uh, I initialization. So uh, you've written. So you register uh, the step. And that's standard uh, I need initialization. And then since you have the configuration object, uh, you've got configuration, pipeline, register, the step that we just added, which is, what do we call it, uh, warning step. Cool. So let's take it for a spin. Got compiler errors. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> OK, there we go. Oh, all right. 
thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, let's. So let's send some messages, and some of them would take time, and then there you go, you, you receive the warning. So this is pretty much how you uh, like add new steps. When you add steps, you, you, can, you can specify you know, where exactly it needs to go on the pipeline. So now um, I wanted to show you guys like really quick uh, how you can replace an existing behavior. So let's say you wanted to tweak some uh, uh, like, for example, how messages get audited, and you wanted to add some of your own stuff in. So you wanted to tweak existing behavior. So uh, let's see how we can do that. So um, same deal. You uh, you have you have your class that needs to implement your I behavior and uh, specify the the context and auditing. Auditing is part of receiving. When you receive a message, you process it and then you forward the or to the audit queue. So it's part of the incoming uh, pipeline. So you implement that. So um, before you actually go ahead and like start replacing behaviors, we suggest that you take a like look at how the existing behavior is implemented, so that you don't break downstream things that supposed to work a certain way. So so start with the code that is already there. So um, the auditing behavior is on uh, is uh, is right here. Uh, on GitHub. So you could take a look at the auditing behavior, see what it does. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start with um, like the current behavior that is being implemented. So I'm just going to copy that. Add all the references that it needs. So um, I might want to audit, send these audit messages to a different queue. So I may not need what I get, but instead I might put my own queue. And um, so in this case, I really don't want to audit like the control messages that come in to the system. I don't want those going to the audit queue. And maybe I want only. Uh, the events that are being handled to, to the audit queue and not the commands. So I want to filter and exclude these message types. So what I'm going to do is um, I, I see that this is the, 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 the next is being called. So the, so the auditing happens, or the auditing step is at a very, very high level. So downstream, if all of the things succeed and it gets processed successfully, then the fo actions following the next happen. So, um, so I want to keep that as is. So I want to, uh, and I see here that here's where you call the message auditor and you forward it to the to the queue. So I'm going to put my conditions right there. There we go. Um, so, so remember, the context gives you uh, data so that you can look at what's coming through the pipeline. And so with the context, you can look at the incoming message both at a physical message level and at the logical message level. So first thing I want to check is, like, hey, is if this is a control message. So every time like something sends subscription messages, uh, I don't care. I don't want it to go to the audit queue. I just want my regular messages. So we can check that by looking at the context. So context dot 
physical message dot, then you have the whole deal of what you normally get with your transport messages. So headers dot contains key. Uh, if it contains headers dot control message header, then simply return. I don't want it to audit. So that's one condition. The other condition is I want to exclude all the other message types or some message types. So you can then look at the uh, context dot uh, logical, uh, incoming logical message. So now you've got like how it looks from a logical message perspective. And then look at the message type and say, you know, if message type not equals uh, type of what do we call it? Like I had a command do something at a scheduled time. So every time you hit enter, that command gets executed. I don't want that message to get audited, so I'm going to exclude that. So I give, I exclude that, Let's do something. So if anything is a, not that message type, then go ahead and, and um, handle this. So now we have the actual behavior that would exclude control messages and whatever not. Now we need to tell the pipe uh, or end service bus like, hey, don't use what you normally use for message auditing. Instead, use my step. So you, you'll need to add that, uh, that initialization. So here is where you say, you know, replace this particular step. So the, the step that we want to replace is the well-known step um, audit process message. And we want to replace it with what? So type of our new behavior that we wrote. And I believe that's filter auditor auditing behavior. So let's build that. Hey, it built. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me go ahead and uh, look at the audit log. So since we had processed uh, before, as you can see, there's a couple of control messages. And uh, there's a, you probably can't see, right, Edie? Um, so as you can see, uh, there's, there's, there's some control messages, and there's the, there's the command, and there's probably also that, that event. So this is what we're trying to filter. Um, so So let me go ahead and purge the auto queue. So we start clean, and let's fire it up. Okay. Uh, just a second. I will show you with the breakpoint also. <laughs> um, so okay. So we've got some three events uh, that's processed. Let's uh, take a look at the queue now. So there are three messages, and all of them are just that event that happened, and we've successfully filtered out the control messages and the other, other types. So uh, I will run this one more time, and I will put a breakpoint just for you, Udi.
So first, all this happens, and then <laughs> my Visual Studio now wants to act up. Um, so let's. Uh, run to cursor. So now we look at the context, incoming messages, and is it a control message? And OK. <laughs> Let's see. And it was a control message. So, um, <laughs> so how about I set a breakpoint here, where we actually audit? So So when it so that's when this is when we're actually now processing the event. So if we go here now it's going to audit because this now this message type is that particular message type and that condition satisfied. So in essence, you now have the flexibility to to you know not just add your own behavior but also tweak in how N Service Bus does things for you. And uh, you can because of this nesting, you now can do your own stuff like before you call next or after you call next. So whatever the occasion calls for. So um, the other thing that I wanted to show you was um, if, if we wanted to do something very, uh, very, very simple, like for example, um, on the outgoing side, we want to uh, say retry exceptions. You do a bus.send. For whatever reason, Q doesn't exist or, or that code is going to throw. So if you wanted to add some, some very, very simple exception handling uh, like that, how would you do? And it's the same deal. You would write a behavior, and since this is on the outgoing side, you would handle, uh, you would implement iBehavior outgoing context, which will give you the context, and then you would pretty much like wrap the next in a try-catch block. So if anything blows up downstream before that message is actually dispatched to the whatever destination queue, you know, you now can catch that exception and do whatever you want. You could do retries, and um, you could look at the exception type and see how you want to handle that. So now you know you you have that flexibility. So uh, let's do that really quick. I have a break point, Udi. <laughs> so, uh, so it's classic. We've implemented I behavior outgoing context. We've wrapped it. And this is, again, I want to uh, highlight that this is something that you couldn't do before. You had the begin and end in two different methods, and you could not do something so simple as a try catch between like three nested steps or whatever it is that you wanted to do. So um, the rest of the step is very simple. You um, you now need a, a, a brand new step, so uh, retry step, and then this would you will need since you need a new step you call uh, you would you would need uh, to implement register step and the constructor retry step. 
and you call the base, pass it what this new step is. Um, and the reason why like these little like descriptions of your steps matter is because um, I I'll show you in a minute. We've, uh, John, John wrote this really nifty tool that kind of like lets you actually see the, the different uh, pipeline steps that are happening. So it's, it's kind of nice when, when you put meaningful descriptions and, um, and identifiers for your steps so you can actually visualize this. So, uh, okay. And of course, you need to specify the, the type of the behavior. And uh, what do we call this? Retry behavior. Oops. Retry behavior and uh, retry send op. So you've got that. And we need to say where exactly this needs to happen. And uh, this is where, um, like, when you're dealing with the stuff, this class called pipeline builder, that's, this is like our basic place where like, we register the incoming behaviors and stuff. So if you want to take a, a peek at that class to see where, uh, how, you know, what steps get called first. So in here on the outgoing core behaviors um, are good cop, bad cop behavior. That's the en enforced best practices step. That's like our outermost stuff. And that's the one that Udi was talking about previously, where it makes sure that you can't, uh, uh, you can't use bus.send and pass it an event, and then you know events need to be published and commands need to be sent. So that sort of uh, uh, good practices enforcement, where it throws an exception, that's being done there. So what we want to do is like we want this brand new step to be the the top most step that would like nest everything else. So um, what we're doing is we will insert before the well-known step of enforce best practices. Okay. And lastly, we need to tell the pipe that, hey, we've got this brand new step. So I'll be very careful about naming my initialization class. <laughs> Retry step initialization. Okay. I need initialization. And configuration. pipeline dot register and retry what do we call it retry step so okay cool so of course needs to build and hooray it builds so um, now to to um, actually see this Instead of bus.send local, I will just use bus.send, but I will put some queue that's non-existing. So non-existing queue. Um, so I'm sending this message to something that doesn't exist, but I have a, uh, a behavior here that would catch it. So if anything were to happen, you know, we have an exception. We were actually catching that. So in here, we could do fun things like, you know, retry this three times, and then if it still fails, then then do whatever. At least sometimes, if if it's transient, maybe you know it can recover. So that sort of thing. So uh, let's build. Let's start. Okay. So now that that was a previous message in the queue that got handled, uh, but now when when I try to send that brand new command to a queue that was non-existent, now our retry behavior caught it, and we 
can now deal with that exception. So this is, this is how, you know, how powerful uh, the, the cool pipeline is. It not only gives you control over like, how you want to extend, but now it also gives you, you know, how, how and where you put your new behavior in. So you, you get this uh, uh, cool, fantastic extension now. So, um, going back, so what are the possibilities? So I wanted to just share that, you know, in, um, we used this pipeline's ex extensibility within N Service Buzz, within our platform, to, to get this uh, Saga view. So in essence, in Service Insight, in Service Insight has this uh, really, really cool visualization that lets you see you know, when messages come in, how the Saga data is being changed, and what messages are being sent out. So you have this fantastic visualization. But how it's actually you know, done is it's simple behavior that, that gets set. You know, that's a little step that, that, that got added that watches as each message comes in, and then it, it checks, oh, this is a saga, okay, I gotta capture this information and I'm gonna store this. So it adds that little extra details that service control can then look for and service insight can then visualize. So, uh, it, so the possibilities are endless. And um, we in the engineering team, the API nerds, were like super, super you know, excited about the pipeline. And we would love to hear from you, uh, like how you know you're extending it, or what cases you're using it for. If you have troubles or uh, any cool scenarios that you're using it, we'd love, love, love to hear from you. And um, yep, thanks, thanks for your time. Have a fabulous rest of the conference. <laughs>